viewers, this is Aisha Kabir of Prutamalo. Today we are going to discuss COVID-19 in context of higher education in Bangladesh. The pandemic has affected each and every sector of the country and the higher education sector has been particularly hit hard with students unable to go to universities and teachers unable to take classes. Our guest today to speak on the subject is the Acting Vice-Chancellor of the Independent University of Bangladesh, Professor Milan Pagan. Professor Pagan, welcome. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here and uh, hi to all the viewers. Okay. Our first question today is about online classes. There's been a lot of talk about online classes and so I'd like to know what uh, IUB's plans or strategies concerning online classes. Have you any plans about this and how are you going to go about it, Professor Pagan? At IUB, we decided that we need to be realistic. Uh, we did not want to, f we didn't want to follow some of our peer institutions who were making very uh, self-congratulatory statements regarding how great their online education is going and how everything is smooth and so on. I fully agree with the uh, recent UGC's assessment that there are many, many issues and that uh, overall I, uh, Bangladesh is not really ready for a full-fledged online education. That's why we decided that uh, we will uh, implement it uh, gradually. We will make sure that everything is in place before we insist, because at the end of the day, this uh, will impact the future of our students and we do not want to put them in a situation where they will not be able to continue with their education. That's why we decided that in the uh, spring semester, we did not insist on any online classes. We uh, wrapped up the semester based on the coursework and assessments that were done so far, and there was roughly 80%. So we were able to uh, finish that semester, and luckily the UGC uh, gave us uh, the approval. Now, the, the time that we have until uh, July 1st, when we start the new semester, we are using to get everybody ready for this online education. And when I say everybody, I'm talking both about our faculty and our students. Uh, online education, let's face it, is a, a new phenomenon in Bangladeshi context. Uh, it is not that we did not want uh, to... Uh, implement online education. It, the fact is that uh, it was not allowed. Uh, I believe only open university uh, was uh, allowed to uh, conduct uh, distance and online education in Bangladesh. Private universities were not allowed, so we never even attempted. Now, uh, as we know from the experience of uh, other countries, especially the US, UK, Australia, and so on, uh, there was a period of uh, hype regarding the online education. People were thinking that that is the future of education. And then they realized that there are certain things that cannot be done online. So uh, now what everybody is uh, suggesting is the so-called blended model, meaning that certain things are done online, but some things still need to have to be done face to face, of course, if the situation permits that. And I keep emphasizing that uh, whatever we do with our students at the university to prepare them for their future life and jobs, most of those jobs will be done face to face. Even in the new situation, we cannot expect that uh, everything will be done online. Uh, people graduating from the universities will go to real life face to face situations. And if you prepare somebody exclusively online for four years, let's say, and then send them to the face-to-face real-life situation, we, we're going to have problems. So yes, while the situation is really, really bad in terms of increasing number of deaths and infections, uh, we are resorting only to online activities. But as soon as the situation improves at least a little bit, we'll have to add the face-to-face -face, uh, components to that education, especially for practical and lab-based classes, online education cannot be the solution. So what we uh, are doing at IUB, we first uh, selected the platform, which is Google Classroom. And uh, 
We prepared the detailed instructions for the faculty, for the students. We are now in the process of equipping all the classrooms with the necessary additional uh, hardware that is necessary for conducting uh, the, the, the online classes from the campus, because our decision is that the faculty will come to campus and uh, do the online classes from our classrooms. And we are currently uh, in the so-called trial uh, period when we are running a trial online classes on Google Classroom. And that turned out to be a very, very good uh, decision because that gives uh, the opportunity not only to the students, but also to our faculty members to uh, get hands-on experience with this new platform. And above all, we can identify the problems that are happening in this process. I recently uh, read some reports uh, in the media where some universities were happily reporting how great their online education is going. And they were saying that the, that the attendance was around 70%. You know, when it's 70%, you, you look at it from the other side. That means 30% of the students were not able to participate. And 30% of students left behind it is not acceptable. So these trial classes are giving us an uh, opportunity to assess how large this problem is, how many of our students will not be able to join. And then, of course, we're thinking about the solutions. And as I uh, always point out, uh, it cannot be just us our, on our own. Uh, UGC, ministry, government in general, will have to work together to make sure that this online education can reach every corner of Bangladesh. Students in Dhaka, for them, there's, that's not really a, a big problem. The connectivity is good, the bandwidth is okay. They're, most of them are you know, well off and they have uh, pro appropriate devices and so on. But if you yes. think about the yes. villages in Bangladesh, where sometimes there's no electricity, they cannot charge their phones, sometimes the internet connection is very problematic. So these are infrastructure issues that the university cannot solve on its own, but it will have to be a joint effort. There's a lot of talk about new normal and new normal methodology. So what are your thoughts about this new normal methodology in relation to higher education? Yeah, the fact is that online education is a completely different uh, mode of education than face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, and um, to be very, very honest, and again, I'm, I'm referring to the uh, UGC report, which I fully uh, agree with, most of our teachers have never experienced that and they're not used to it. It is a very, very different mode when you are not face to face, when, uh, let's say, we're talking about the online exams, you don't know who's sitting on the other side. You don't know if this is really yes. your student yes. or is that some, you know, uh, borobai or somebody who can, who can uh, help them. So there are many, many challenges here, right? I want to emphasize that online education doesn't mean that you email the materials to the students, have them study it, and then that's it. That's not online education. Online education means that you have interactive contact with your students. You do live lectures where students can interrupt, ask questions, and so on. You do uh, group discussions. Yes. You, do, you have teamwork and so on. Uh, you include, the, you know, the links to video presentations, whatever, when students watch that, then you come together and you have discussions and so on. That's online education. And uh, as I said, it, it takes, a it makes a different, for different mindset. And a lot of uh, faculty members, uh, not just in Bangladesh, all over the world, they just, they're not used to it. As an institution of educational excellence, IUB has a commitment towards quality education. So in this pandemic situation, how do you plan to keep up this commitment towards the students, to the parents and to the community as a whole? Well, see, the first uh, thing that we need to keep in mind is that there is no quality of education without the students, right? So the first thing is we need yes. to make sure that our students uh, are enabled to participate in the education, that they don't drop out of education due to financial difficulties. So our major concern now is to make sure that our students will be able to afford education. We uh, relaxed a lot of criteria at IOB, but not the academic criteria. We're not uh, lowering any uh, you know, quality uh, standards or markers, but we are lowering the, the administrative uh, barriers 
for students to continue their education. For example, in the past, to be a regular student of the university, you had to take uh, three classes or nine credit hours per semester. Now, if somebody cannot afford nine uh, credits, that is, that, does that mean they have to drop out? So we now lowered the bar to six credit hours to be a regular student. And in special cases, we will even consider one course. So even if, if a family can only afford to pay for one course, that student will still be allowed to continue as a regular student. For financial aid in the past, it was 12 credit hours, meaning three classes that were minimum to avail any kind of financial aid. We now lower that to six credit hours. In the past, we reassessed the financial uh, aid every semester. Now, in this situation, we decided that whoever was receiving financial aid in the previous semester will keep it without any reassessment. Uh, we are adding categories uh, of financial aid. And on top of that, we created a student welfare fund where employees, both faculty and staff, our trustees, and we are now in process of negotiating with our alumni, we are contributing from our own pockets to create the fund where, where the students will be allowed to continue. So that's the first condition. You need to have students to you know, uh, have the uh, quality education. But at the same time, as I said, we are not uh, lowering our uh, quality standards. Uh, especially in the in the context of online education, we even need to be uh, more cautious that the quality uh, will not drop, that uh, that face-to-face -face interaction uh, will be replaced with uh, interaction online, not, as I said earlier, just sending out the materials and having students uh, read that on their own. And also, we need to keep in mind that uh, the job of uh, faculty members is not just teaching. There are three components to it. It is the service component, it is the research component, and then, of course, the teaching component. So we are also finding uh, you know, new ways how all that can be done in the new scenario where it will be hard to go out there in the field, collect data, interview people, and whatever. So the whole, the whole landscape of higher education, including the research, publication, and everything is changing, but we have to adapt. There's no, there's no other option. You've been speaking about the plans and the preparations of IUB regarding how to go ahead during this pandemic. So in your capacity as the vice chancellor of one of the top private universities of the country, would you have any recommendations for other universities, other institutes of higher education, parents, students, even policy makers about how to go about higher education in this COVID-19 situation? You know, it's very hard to make recommendations in this context because we know that there are many, many factors influencing uh, the decisions. Uh, one of the things that uh, we need to be aware of is that with uh, more than 100 private universities in Bangladesh, not all of them are of acceptable uh, standard. So I think the government should maybe put more emphasis on making sure that only those who actually meet all of the criteria can uh, be allowed to, to do this job. And even more importantly, in uh, making the requirements or you know, thinking about giving uh, permission or whatever, uh, they should consider the situation of each university. And I'll be very blunt here. If you have a university that's operating from a rented flat in Dunmondy, or you have uh, NSU or PREC or IUB or AIUB with permanent campus, which are state-of-the-art campus, you cannot use the same measure for all of them and say everybody can get 50 uh, seats in, uh, in, in a program. It is unrealistic. So I think that this situation will, will uh, I wouldn't say force, I would say encourage the government that they would have different uh, measures, uh, different stick to measure different institutions. Uh, and my second advice, although I know that it's easy to say, but hard to do, we need to improve the quality of the, uh, the, the, the secondary level of education. Because, uh, you know, when you get students uh, to the English medium institution, like uh, private universities here, and if a large percentage of the students don't even understand spoken English, that is a serious problem. 
So I think uh, a lot of effort should be put on improving the quality of secondary level education in Bangladesh and move, move away from this, uh, you know, rot memorization model where students are just used to memorize something without understanding and then repeating it and then they get good grades. And, you know, I, uh, again, I, I'm not going to mention the, the name of, of the town, but uh, a while ago I, I visited one of the towns outside of Dhaka. Uh, and I had a, a conversation with one of the gentlemen there that I just came across. I never uh, met him before. And his English was very, very poor, very, very poor. He was, you know, hardly able to say things the way that I would understand him. But that's not the, the, the interesting part. The interesting part is when I asked him what his profession was. Guess what? He was a teacher of English in, in the local school. <laughs> So, I mean, how can you then expect the students to, to be fluent in English, right? So there's exactly. a lot of things to be done. And, and you know, to, to be very honest, I think uh, the government is doing a lot and uh, a lot of progress has been shown, but uh, more, more needs to be done. Just two days ago, we were informed, you know, there's this uh, Times Higher Education, T-H-E, Asia Awards. Yes. And uh, out of all uh, institutions in Bangladesh, uh, IUB was the only one who got shortlisted in the category of uh, campaign for student recruitment. So obviously we're doing some things right and I hope that uh, you know others will uh, show the same effort very soon. Thank you. Congratulations to you and to IUB. On that positive note, let me thank you, Professor Pagan, for your time, for the interview, and for all the information and recommendations that you've given. Thank you so much. Stay safe and goodbye. Thank you. So, Bye. You too. Viewers, we were talking to the Acting Vice-Chancellor of IUB, Professor Michael Pagan, and the way ahead in higher education during this COVID-19 pandemic. Till we meet next time. This is Aisha Kabir from Pratamalov signing off.